Coming up today on That LTD Life, it's Paper Guide. Is this the ultimate AI research assistant or is it just another GPT wrapper? Join me as I show you around the tool and you can decide whether or not it's a good fit for your business. My name is Dave and I'm from ClientAmp. I review a new lifetime deal every single day of the week. If you wanna check out Paper Guide, I've got a link in the description, but you should know that this video is not sponsored. I'm gonna tell you everything I like as well as what I don't like about this tool. Let's get into it. This is the AppSumo deal page. Paper Guide is currently just 59 bucks from AppSumo. That's tier one. It's what I'm gonna be using to make this video, but there's two other plans available as well to $129 and 249 bucks. We'll come back to the plans and pricing later on in this video and you can figure out which one's a good fit for your business. But onward to paper guide, here is the user interface. And at first glance, I gotta say, I thought, oh great, it's gonna be another GPT knockoff, but it's not. It's actually pretty detailed and it's focused mainly on research. So let's get right into it. This is the home screen and I've got four options here for different types of chats I can create. I can chat with PDF, I can do AI search. This is gonna allow me to actually search real papers. It's not going to just hallucinate things. It'll give you citations. So that's really amazing because if you've ever used ChatGPT, sometimes it'll actually give you citations that don't even exist. It happens. Uh, all right, we've also got literature review, which honestly is quite a bit like the AI search. I might need some clarification on when to use one or the other. Uh, then the last option here is called extract data. So this would be maybe you got some survey results or some type of, you know, you're doing a study and you've got all of that documented in a CSV. You can upload that to the AI and ask it questions. Now there's two more components here. We've got our reference manager. So if you're working on, let's say a book or some type of large body of work that you've got main topics about, you can upload all of those references and they can all live inside of your paper guide account. Then when you do creations like writing, you've got a writer right here, it can actually reference your uploads first. So it'll be based on the actual research that you have documented. Okay, before we get into the writer, let me show you how the references section actually works. I've already uploaded a couple PDFs here. You can upload other formats as well, by the way. You can link over to URLs. You can search for existing papers online. That's a really cool feature. We can upload docs, PDFs, you can import uh, BibTeX or RIS docs. That's gonna be more academic type of papers. So academic folks will know what those are. We can also import from this app called Zotero or just add things manually. So on my account, I've got a couple PDFs that I have uploaded. Let's upload one more so you can kind of see this from beginning to end. I'm gonna hit add paper and then I'm gonna upload a file. And I've got the manual for my camera here. I know that's not very academic, but it's a PDF that I have on my computer. I'm gonna go ahead and upload that. You can see it's working over here. And when this is complete, I should get a little check mark. Now, one little bug report that I did encounter is if you upload a file that's too big, it's not going to process it. So the manual for my camera is about six megabytes, no problem. I also uploaded the beginner's guide to DaVinci Resolve. That's about 25 megabytes, no problem. But when I went much bigger, actually, quite a bit bigger. I have the full manual to DaVinci Resolve, which I think is like 150 megabytes, really big. Could probably compress it to get it smaller, but it actually threw me in air when I did that upload. So just something to be aware of if you have a huge documents, maybe with like very detailed anatomy drawings or something like that, and they're just a ginormous file sizes, it might not be able to upload. Now with my AppSumo tier one plan, I'm supposed to have 20 gigabytes of storage. It doesn't indicate if there's a max file size, but I'm definitely running into that. So something that's very important when you're doing research is to keep your references organized. And I'm happy to say that Paper Guide has a couple of options here that are both pretty strong. First of all, we can just do normal old folders. So you can see over here, I've got all papers. I created a folder called video editing. And inside of this, I don't have any documents. So let's go ahead and move some of my existing documents that I've uploaded as references into that folder. So if I just click on the triple dots over here, I can choose add to folder and then I'll choose my video editing folder. And I'm gonna repeat that with my DaVinci Resolve guide over here. And now if I check my folder, I've got both of those documents there. All right, no real big deal there. We've also got tagging available. So you can see with this document right here, I've tagged it as money. And with the bottom one here, I have tagged it as uh, video editing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tag this one as well. I can click on the button here to select one of the tags, or I could create a brand new one. So let's go over to tags, I'm gonna choose new, and I'll just call this manuals. 
I'll choose a new emoji here because that is the primary indicator of what the tag actually is. It's not gonna say the word until you hover over it. So choose emojis that make sense. All right, I've got a book selected here for manuals. That's gonna work for me. And you can see that I've got the tag living over here. So let's go ahead and add it to my recently uploaded file. All right, so this is all kind of like basic computer functionality. No big deal, but honestly, a lot of these GPT wrappers don't even have this sort of thing. So I was thinking, okay, these folks did a pretty good job here of just adding in that kind of you know basic tool that we expect to see. And then I figured out, hey, you can actually do so much more in this section. So let me just click, for example, on this profit first summary. Profit first, if you don't know, is a way to organize your business income. Uh, I've been using that system for, gosh, I'd say almost 10 years at this point. Uh, really great book. Definitely go check this out. This is a summary PDF that came with the book when I got it on Audible way back when. Uh, so if I wanted to actually dig into this PDF, well, I could chat with the paper right here, or I could just go over to AI summary and tell me, tell it like, all right, give me the summary of this book and I'll hit generate. And in a moment here, it's going to spit out an actual summary. There we go. We've got our summary of everything inside of this PDF. And that's very helpful. I can just kind of get a bird's eye view. Uh, you know, you can do this with highlights, synopsis, key concepts. All right, great. But really no big deal because you can upload a PDF to just about any tool. All right, so let's move along. We've got notes over here. I can create notes from my PDF. I could just, you know, add in a note right here. Okay, cool. So you can take manual notes as well. Again, kind of basic computer functionality. But there's this button right here that says view PDF and annotate. Let's click on that. Ah, now we unlock a real researcher type tool. So I can actually read the document here. And if I wanted to highlight a section, I can choose highlight. Maybe I'll change my color to make it yellow. And then I can just select the areas that I want to highlight. So I'm just going to do, I don't know, this sentence right here. Shows up over here. Now it's a note. It automatically created my highlight as a note. And of course, I could delete this or edit it if I wanted to. But we can do even more. Notice it says draw over here. I can select this. And maybe, I don't know, this paragraph here is really important to me or it's a chart or something that I want, I can't actually just highlight. So I'll just select it and it's gonna take a screenshot and I could add some notes to it here. I'll say my demo note number two and hit add. Now in my notes, it actually has that screenshot. And let's say I'm reading at a different part of the document, but I do wanna go back to that chart that I grab. I can just click right on it and it's gonna scroll me right to that part of the page. And one step even better is that there's an ask AI section over here. So I don't have to leave and go create a new chat with the PDF when I'm already taking notes. I can do it all inside of this screen. It even gives me some sample prompts like what is the main topic discussed in the text? I just click that, it asks the question and then generates the answer right here. Now keep in mind, this tool is geared towards researchers, academic folks, scientists, those types of people. So we've got some built in prompts that will be useful to them. You can see right over here, if I click on, there, these are some prompts right here, but I can click on this button and it shows me what are the research methodologies used? What are the limitations of this study? What are the key findings of this paper? And explain the abstracts of the paper. So there's a lot of things that are really going to be appreciated by researchers. Now, one other cool thing that comes up when you're using the chat function is that we get the little crosshairs over here. We can select this just like we saw before to make a note, except this time we can use it as a source for the AI. So if I wanted to ask about, I don't know, how about this section right here, I could select it and then just wait a second. I can actually write a prompt here and say, explain this calculation, hit send. And now it sends that image over there and it's gonna now explain the calculation to me. Overall, the quality of the AI output is extremely high. Here are the plans and pricing. We'll check back on these later, but I do wanna point out that it's using GPT-4, GPT-4.0, as well as Claude 3.5 Sonnet. Okay, we're gonna jump out of the references and move into the AI writer, but before we do, I wanna point out that when you have your list of references, you might want to make sure that all of the annotations and the documentation is exactly as it needs to be. Well, you can simply edit the reference right here and you get all of the listing information, such as the name of the book, the edition, the volume number. You can make as much annotations and details here as you need. 
Okay, so jumping over into the writer section, I'm gonna create a new document over here. This is very ChatGPT or even Jarvis-like where we get a list of our documents and we can create new ones. It asks for a prompt to kickstart your writing journey. So, so I'll say that I'm gonna write a book about taco recipes focused on how each area of the United States has different nuances to how they like their tacos prepared. So let's go ahead and create this document right here. By the way, before we do that, I wanna point out that there are many different citation styles available. So if you're doing this for an academic purpose, you can actually build in the correct citation style that is needed for your publication type. So that is really cool. My taco book is not going to be published, so I'll just proceed with the default APA 7, which I guess is American Psychological Association. Okay, so here's how the writer works. It kicks you into a document and it gives you an outline of what might be included in this case in my taco book. Now, if I want to have it write a lot of this content for me, I can simply just go to a new line and press command J and then give it a prompt. And I'll ask it to write the intro. And there we go. Now I've got an intro to my new taco book. Now, if I want to keep this, I'll press enter to accept it. But if I want another version, I can just use the right arrow and it's going to generate another version of this. If I decide that my last version was better than the new one, I'll press the left arrow to go back to that and I'll press enter to accept the entry. Now, you don't have to use this as a strict AI writer. There's pretty decent editing tools built right in. I can go to new line here, press slash, add in a heading, add in a bulleted list, numbered list, block quotes, to-do lists, horizontal rules, and even some raw code. There's also a plagiarism checker built right in, so I can just click right up here and it's gonna check my document for plagiarism. It's gonna analyze it right here. Currently, it is 20% complete, not 20% plagiarism. All right, the plagiarism checker is complete. I am 100% in the clear here. They found zero plagiarism, so we can go through and finish writing our book. No fear for that intro paragraph getting us busted. Now, obviously, I'm not insinuating that you should do research in this style, just having AI write it for you. What's really cool is that you can do all of this research by citing actual papers. So let's dig into that. For this, I'm gonna go back to the home screen right here just to show you how it's gonna connect up to this workbooks section. So I'm gonna ask the AI, what is the minimum amount of protein required to build muscle? And let's go ahead and search this. Now, the cool thing here is it's not gonna just hallucinate an answer. It's actually gonna go out and find some citations. So here we go, I've got my answer and it's from top relevant papers. And my answer is it takes 0.54 grams per kilogram per day of protein to build muscle, particularly in older men. And it cites some references down here. I can actually open up these PDFs and they're linked. You can see in the lower left-hand corner, the sources, these are real sources. So this document here is about the amount of protein required to improve muscle mass in older adults. If I click on that, I go directly to download that PDF. And here is what that PDF looks like after it downloads, it's the right document. And if I wanna chat with this document, I can do so right here. Just click the chat button. It's gonna start a new chat directly with that document. No uploading necessary, it's able to pull it in and then go ahead and just start asking questions. Now, if I find that, yeah, this document is really, really helpful to me, well, guess what? There's a little button right here to add it to the reference manager. I click that and you guessed it, it's gonna load this right into the reference manager over here. And we can now see the amount of protein required to improve muscle mass in older adults living in our references. How cool is that? Everything kind of comes full circle. So remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned there's AI search and there's also literature review. I'm still a little unclear on exactly what the difference is, but if I do a literature review search, it actually creates something called a workbook for me. So let me show you how this works. They're, they give you some sample prompts. I'm gonna choose one of these. What are the long-term effects of social media use on mental health in adolescence? A great topic for anyone who has kids. I'm gonna click that and it takes me right over into what's called a workbook. This is an amazing interface, especially if you're researching a particular topic such as this one right here. Well, what I can do is see all of the top papers and then whatever contents I deem interesting, I can highlight in a table down here and I can filter out things. And when I'm done, I can even export the contents. So here are all of the scientific papers cited in this left-hand column. It's labeled papers. Then we've got the overall insights that have been gleaned from it, but I could add in additional columns as well, like maybe the methodology, I'll choose that. And it's gonna use AI to go ahead and figure out what the methodology of each paper is. Or the funding source, if that's important to me, I wanna make sure that 
the research is clean and it's not going to be corrupted. Well, I can see the funding over here on the right now. And maybe my table is getting a little bit big, but I could certainly dial this in to be exactly the information that I want. And I didn't mention it yet, but in this papers column, I can actually link out to the exact study. I can download the PDF. I can choose it as a citation, or I can add it right to my references library. So I'm gonna do that just to show you that it gets added. This is a study of the correlation between social media use and adolescent mental health. We'll go over to references here, and there it is. Yeah, so honestly, the AI search and the literature review are so similar to me because I still get kind of that AI search result above the literature review that I feel like they could almost be a single prompt, but I do get now why there is two, it makes sense. So for example, here is the answer to my question. It says social media use in adolescence has a complex effects on mental health and then goes on citing seven of the top papers. So that's Paper Guide. It's a very impressive tool for research and I love the AI capabilities, not getting in the way, but truly supplementing the actual behavior you're trying to do, which is research. So here are the plans of pricing available from AppSumo. Tier one, 59 bucks. It's gonna give you just one seat, 20 gigs of storage, 20 calls in three hours. So what that means is you'll be able to do 20 research inquiries in three hours and then it would reset. Kind of like if you have a ChatGPT account, you might run into your limits and then you just gotta wait for some time before you can use it again. We get eight columns in our literature review and we get 25 documents per extraction. If that's not enough for you and you need more research, well, go up to tier two, which triples your storage. Now you get 60 gigs of storage, 50 calls in three hours before you get that rate limiting or hitting your cap and needing to wait before you do any more AI chatting. Then we've got 50 columns in our literature review. So you'll literally be able to add as many columns as you probably are going to need. We've got 100 documents per extraction. And then we also add in unlimited AI content humanizer and unlimited AI plagiarism checks. And the primary thing that changes when you go from tier two to tier three is now you don't need to work alone. You get two additional team seats for a total of three seats. You also get a little bit more storage, but everything else remains the same. So that is Paper Guide. What a cool tool. I really love how the developers were able to take the general concept of AI and then really niche down into research and finding a way to make AI truly useful to researchers. I love that. I hope to see more of that from AI tools rather than just more image generation tools and more document writing tools. This is really cool to see it more targeted. That's the way we need to be with AI. I believe the old saying is the riches are in the niches and hopefully for Paper Guide, they find some paper themselves because I really like this tool quite a bit. I'm going to give it a 7.9. That's gonna do it for this review. If you found this video to be helpful, I've got my AppSumo link in the description. It really helps me out when you click that before shopping over at AppSumo. Otherwise, click that like button, get subscribed if you're new, check out ClientAmp for the free email newsletter, and I'll see you in the next review.